I think one of the things that makes video making so important and what makes it so great is that when you make a video and you upload it online, you're you're allowing yourself to be there for someone. And it's kind of a vague statement, but you don't you know you want to be there for someone. Someone you care about usually, but it like you care about your species and the survival of our race and all that and you want to be there we need to be there for each other and and that the way it used to work is like if you, if someone was sad and they wanted that human connection they'd put on music or a, a tv show or a movie or something and you get to kind of be around someone and, and you know experience a story with them and it and makes you feel better to be there i i noticed recently a lot that sometimes if I'm not feeling psychologically good, if I need, you know, connection, I'll put on a YouTube video and listen to like pixelated Apollo or like, you know, some, somebody that I like that just is doing, talking about something interesting, Joe Rogan, uh, MF Pally time lately. These, these great Tim, Tim cast, Tim, Tim pool, uh, like just people I know or people that I that I enjoy just like having on in the background that it it is like having a person there and it's like you're in the room with them you ever watch those Joe Rogan you know fight companion things that he does he and Eddie Bravo and Brian Callen and Brendan Schaub at all will do Jamie obviously is there too and it's like you're in the room with them and like for this, it's like you're in the room with me. And like the old TV shows and, and music recordings, I mean, that stuff still exists, but this is just like accessible. It's an accessible form of that where we can all, at the opt of a button, be there for each other. And But it's kind of, it's it's vague because you're not, I'm not like in the room with you. I'm not here for you right now. I don't even know who you are. I'm talking to a camera, but you are there and you are listening to me. And that is a weird mind fuck, man. What have we become? What are we becoming? What are we doing to ourselves? We're totally different than we were a hundred years ago. Humans have altered and are continuing to alter so quickly and so rapidly. It's fascinating. It, it makes me want to take resveratrol and NMN nicotinamide mononucleotide to extend my telomeres and chromosomal health so that I can survive longer to experience this amazing transformation. This chrysalis is becoming the butterfly. I saw two of them. This stuff's really good. Resveratrol is like the stuff from pink and red fruits and vegetables like grape skin or beets. It's an antioxidant which means that it makes it more challenging for your cells to oxidize, which is like when they rust, when the carbon in your body turns into carbon dioxide, it's oxidizing. And uh, that's the that's how carbon rusts. Technically, I don't think it's actual rust. It's oxidation. Rust is a type of oxidation that metal experiences. Fire is a type of oxidation. Speaking of fire and oxidation... I love you, man. <laughs> I love you, man. It's a weird world we're in. I mean, it's not that weird. It's normal. And it's kind of a cop-out to say it's weird because it is. Just it, it just is. And But it's this, this tech, how you can sit back and talk to a video camera and relate to pe to someone, to people. And you can relate to like a thousand people at once. Like I'll do a video and I'll look at the analytics and it'll be like one video, 12 minutes, 8,000 at watch hours. You're like, what the fuck? That means that like 800 people, I'm just throwing out random numbers, 800 people watched 12 minutes. That's, yeah, it's like, that's like 9,600 hours or something. Uh, more like uh, 10,400 Dolt, uh, talking to myself there. Um, but so like, it just means that a bunch of people watch 12 minutes of you, but, but somehow a 10,000 hours of you got watched. It's, it's a very weird, 
equation. It's a very weird way to be, to behave. I mean, technically, if you're on stage and there's 10,000 people watching you perform, all 10,000 of them are adding to that hour, you know, for an hour. There's 10,000 hours of watch time, but you only perform for one hour. But you got consumed for 10,000 hours, perceptively. So, like, that's The Giving Tree, which is a book by uh, Shel Silverstein, the guy who did the f where the where the where the where the where the thing ends. I don't remember the one of Shel Silver. He was like this trippy hipster in the in the fifties or sixties or something. Did a bunch of acid and wrote children's books. It was like where the where the road ends, where the where the something ends. It was crazy weird. Shel Silverstein, man, highly recommend looking up books by Shel Silverstein. If you like books. And if, if you're interested in acid, acid gets a bad rep, you know, I never used to do it and I haven't done it in a while, but it doesn't like burn like hydrochloric acid on your face or anything. I mean, you can't really even tell it's acid. It's just, a, it's, it's lysergic acid, but it's more like water that makes you <laughs> experience the waves of nature. It doesn't like burn your, nothing burns. There's no burning involved. So I don't know if we should be calling it that. I mean, it's a type of acid, but I don't know. Air is a type of electronic force. It doesn't mean that we have to call it the air you breathe electrons, even though there's electrons in it. Uh, so I don't know if you need to call it LSD acid, even though it's there's acid in it. I'm getting way off on a tangent here, man, but thanks for coming along for the ride. Um, so we are the giving tree, Shell Silverstein. And one of the nice things about smoking less weed, because I have been smoking less weed lately, is it's way easier to follow through with large segments of thought. Weed's great because it enables you to what the way your mind works from what i understand is that your your synapses will uh they fire like one will light up one neuron and then it will send the charge to the next neuron which will light up and then this one will dim as this one lights up and then this one will send it to this one that lights up as this one dims and as they dim and they light up and dim in succession when they dim is when you write memories but when they light up is when you have the experience and then you they shut back down so that you can record the experience. But with weed, for this is kind of a vague th it's a thing that I've learned, is that they all light up together and they stay lit up. And you have these wild compounding experiences that are like life changing. But then when it's done, you're like, what, what, what was I? What, what, what? And I thought it was so fascinating to record that myself experiencing it because i'd say things and do things i was like what the hell did i just say it's kind of like writing music sometimes i'll get in the flow with or without weed or drugs or anything just get in the flow and like words i'll be singing whatever words come off the top of my head and then i i'm like oh that was so good but i can't remember what what was the exact line that i said and so recording it i'll be able to go back and watch and maybe we maybe that's just a style of flow state like when your brain's in flow flow state's really unique and it's very it's very awesome but you know, having that snap ability to record your thoughts and jump back to where you were, like the giving tree and Shel Silverstein and getting back to how we are giving this, this technology is enhancing our ability to give our energy to multiple people at once and to kind of spread our energy uh, more efficiently is also very useful. Like, is a, I never did drugs or dr drank alcohol or anything until I was 23 years old, so... I, I was always very snap naptical. Like I could, I could remember magic cards, thirty thousand cards. I'd recall, all, well, you know, not all of them, but incredible amounts of recall with all this script re memorizing and all this stuff. It was just so that was I was like a robot. And but when it came to like experiencing true emotion and and writing, it was just outside of my out of my my ballpark, outside of my. I mean, what would you call it? My my uh, my veneer, I don't know what you would call it, but it was outside of my purview. That was the word I was thinking of. Uh, it was just something I didn't understand. I didn't I didn't comprehend it. I didn't I didn't I like didn't like Tool, the band. Dave Matthews Band was boring. The Doors boring. All that like, like 
yawn. They're not actually, it's not moving fast enough for me. But then when I would get stoned, you know, get into that flow, you can feel, you just feel it on a, like you're more sensitive to the, to the vibration of the low frequency or something. And, and, and it's easier to understand, to feel basic. I mean, I think, you know, we have these THC receptors in our brain, these uh, cannabinoid receptors. I think it's a big part of our evolution, like that these monkeys used to eat the marijuana plant and it helped them gain sentience over time and, and get smarter and smarter. And they had these more intense experiences and emotional experiences and, and kind of grew into what we know as humans. Uh, probably other psychedelics as well, like psilocybin. If you haven't ever taken psilocybin, that's, a, that's an incredible substance because you will have amazing mind controlling experiences where you learn how to control your body like you are the body is a meat sack and you are the brainstem creature floating inside of it pulling on it with electrical power like yanking the muscles around basically and lysergic acid which comes from uh, was derived from ergotamine which is a type of chemical uh the group from ergot which is a type of fungus so i think that humans these ancient monkeys would eat the ergot on the rye, you know, the, the rotting fungus and the psilocybin on the poop mushrooms and the, the THC out of the, the cannabis, out of the marijuana plant. And uh, it really, it takes you, it takes you back to this like primal understanding stage when you, when you have those things, it's a really amazing, amazing th thing. And there's all, there's, as always such a thing as overdosing. I think that even when you get stoned, it's a type of overdose. So like with weed, you don't need much at all to really get the benefits from it. A tiny, tiny amount of that stuff. You know, it's it's like um, an insect insecticide, I think. It'll like kill insects. It's poisonous. THC, I believe, is poisonous for insects. It's like its own, the plant's defense mechanism. And, I, and it stays in your muscles. So, God, I used so much of it in my fucking 20s and 30s that I probably still residually am stoned for the rest of my life. Every once in a while, you know, it'll you can take a little to reactivate, but you just, once you get it, you got it. Hmm. Loosen up. I'm going to go get some rest, homie. Talk to you later.